How's it going, guys? I'm Mike Dwyer from the Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com, and I've got a really simple trick for you today to help you fit synths or keyboards or really any extra tracks into a really dense rock mix. If you've tried mixing a song like this before, you know how difficult it can be, because you've got this giant wall of sound coming from your guitars and bass and drums and vocals. So when you've got a really cool keyboard part or whatever, it can be really tough to fit it into the mix and get it sitting into a place where it's actually helping the mix and not just clouding things up. So let's just take a quick listen to part of this song so we can see what we're working with. By the way, this track is called Take the Money and Run by the band Start the Week Over. Be sure to check them out if you're digging this song. But anyway, like I said, we've got this big wall of sound, but then we've got a few keyboard parts that I had to squeeze in. Let's just see what those are. So we've got this pad. And then this piano part. So let's look at what we're doing to fit that into the mix. So I have a few EQ moves on this piano, but we're really just focusing on one of them for this technique. And that is this band right here. So what we're doing is pulling out a whole lot, about nine decibels at 280 Hertz. But we're only doing this to the mid band. So if you don't know about mid side, I might make a whole video on this, but the short of it is on a stereo signal, whatever is the same between the left and the right channel is the mid and anything that's different between the left and right channel is the side. So by EQing just the mid signal, it's leaving everything on the sides alone and just cutting out stuff that's sitting in the center of the speakers. So why does this help us in this case? Well, it does a couple things for us. First off, there's just a lot of energy right here in all the other instruments. So we'd probably wanna be cutting some low mids out of this track regardless. But more importantly, think about what's in this area in the mid channel. So what you would have pan centered in your mix that would be living in this two to 300 Hertz area. So there we have the fundamental of our snare drum. We have a lot of information in the bass guitar living here and all the body of our vocals are in that range. So by cutting this on the mid channel, we're clearing up room for all of those things. But since we're leaving this two to 300 Hertz area in the side channels, our piano isn't getting super thin. If we just did a standard cut here, the piano probably wouldn't have enough body. But then the other cool thing this is doing is it's also making our piano track wider. I usually like synth parts and pads, especially this pad that we'll listen to in a second, to be really, really wide, to just kind of be the sparkly pretty stuff on the sides. Again, without taking up a lot of room in the center of the mix where all those other more important elements are living. So let's pop this in and out and hear the difference. So with it in, it's obviously getting a little bit thinner, but you should also hear it getting wider. Let's listen on the synth. I think it'll be a little more obvious here. Yeah, that's much more obvious. I mean, we're doing a bigger cut, almost 10 decibels and a much wider cue. But there's also a lot more in that frequency range to begin with in this track as compared to the piano. So let me solo this band so you can hear exactly what we're cutting out. So yeah, that would definitely be clouding up our mix. Now just for fun, let me create a side band here around that same frequency range, just so you can hear what we're actually keeping in that frequency range. And lastly, let's just turn this into a normal cut where it's cutting the mids and sides, everything, just so you can hear the difference. So yeah, when we turn it to a normal standard cut, it gets super thin and pretty narrow. But then by switching it back to the mid cut, it retains a lot of its thickness and also helps to widen our mix. And like I said at the beginning of the video, it's not just keyboards and synths. That's just the spot I use it most often. But in this song, I also used it on one of our acoustic guitar tracks. So you can see I'm going a little bit less here, but still a fairly big cut in the lower mid range. So let's see what difference that's making. And 
and let's really exaggerate it for a second. So again, it's just making it way wider and opening up all that space in the middle for our snare drum and our vocals and our bass. So try this out in your next mix and let me know if it works for you. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And head on over to bettermixes.com to grab a free copy of my Ultimate EQ Cheat Sheet.